There once was a man. This man lived in a house. This was no ordinary house. This house seemed to contain the whole world. This house seemed to have infinite rooms in every direction and statues of every variety. Despite the immensity of this house, they lived here only one other person, the other. So imagine this man's surprise when he learns that there's a third person in this house that wants to do him harm. Today I'm going to be talking about parallax and how you can achieve parallax in Blender. And this is going to be a very 2D heavy video. If you're a complete beginner, some things I do might confuse you here, so it might help you to check out my Blender Grease Pencil for Beginners video. And by the way, the story from the beginning of this video was from the book Piranesi by Susanna Clark, but more on that later. So what is parallax? So after doing some extensive research, I found out that parallax is the effect whereby the position or direction of an object appears to differ when viewed from different positions. So as a 2D animator, I want to give the illusion of depth because in real life, things are not just flat and parallax is a great way to make your animation look like it has layers. Like in real life, how things have layers, the mid-ground, foreground or background. We'll talk more about that later. Actually, this step is very uncomplicated. It's basically you planning out the shots and planning where your background, mid-ground and foreground elements are going to be. But honestly, your animation can have as many layers as you want. It mustn't just be the mid-ground, foreground and background. You can have like as many as five, six or even seven uh, layers. I haven't sketched out a short list on a piece of paper, so this doesn't even have to be complicated at all. Another thing I like to do is to gather inspiration. Most of my posts on Instagram is me basically scrolling on Pinterest, seeing something I like and going, Ferb, I know what we're going to do today. And that's my whole creative process. Where's Perry? In this step, you basically implement the plan you made in the last step. But since you already have a plan on how the scene should look, this step should be at least 10 times easier. As you can see, my environment or my scene here has many, many elements. There are 2D elements, there are 3D elements. Um, all of them come together to make this scene. So these statues are actually 2D uh, grease pencil objects, while the pillars in the foreground are also 2D grease pencil objects. Well, but everything else is like a 3D uh, kind of model. And I tune shaded those models to get the look I was going for. In order to achieve depth in our composition or in our scene, we can't just allow our elements to be on the same line or on the same plane. We have to vary the position of our elements on the X, Y, Z axis. So if you want to achieve these effects with 2D grease pencil objects, you are going to have to get comfortable with drawing grease pencil objects in different positions in space. Imagine how they will draw a nose on this face and we change the camera position a bit, you see that it's not in the same orientation. When you draw a grease pencil object in one position and move on to another position in space, it can be tricky to get back to that original position. But I have a trick for this, go to edit mode, select any part of that grease pencil object you were editing before, press shift S and press cursor to select it. Now the cursor or the canvas is on that particular grease pencil object that you want to edit. Now you can edit that grease pencil object freely and there is no like uh, distortion, everything is on the same plane. Uh, be sure to have your orientation on 3D cursor and front view here. Before we continue, a lot of you seem to be interested in how I do my tune shading, uh, how I achieve this tune shading effect in most of my work. So I'm just going to leave, I've already taught, talked about this before in my like first video but i'm going to leave a link to my video where i talked about it here in the description and even a timestamp to exactly what time i was talking about it since maybe some of you didn't like watch it to the end or something so i'll leave a link to that in the description one more tip i have for this step is that if you have a character performing an action in your scene like in this scene i have a character walking down this hallway ideally you want your character to be between the foreground and the background so that the actions of the character is completely clear to the audience 
There are countless camera movements, each with its own function. But since this video is more about like parallax, I'm going to talk about the three camera movements that, in my own opinion, help sell that illusion of depth without breaking the illusion. They are the pushing shots, pull out shots, and the trucking shots. The pushing shots is where you physically move the camera closer to a subject. This camera movement can be used to highlight a subject or to show the audience something specific. The pull out shot basically does the opposite where it moves the camera away from the subject. This shot can be used to give more context to a scene or give more information to the environment our character is inhabiting. The next is the trucking shot. This shot is basically moving the camera laterally, that is to say with no rotation, along a single axis. This shot can be used to show where a character is and what the world consists of. And that's all for the video guys, thank you for watching, make sure you like and subscribe. Wait, wait, what, what's, what's there, there's something in the background there, what's that? Oh, what is it, thank you for five, who put this there? I've been getting into listening to audiobooks recently and I feel like that's one of the best decisions I've ever made. Because the amount of depth and storytelling that is lost in translation in movie adaptations, it's, it's, it's just crazy. And yes, I'm looking at you, yes you, you that prefers to watch the movie instead of reading the book. Just read the book bro. <sighs> what was I talking about? Yes, Piranesi. Piranesi is one of the first few works of fiction I've read by myself of my own volition and surprise surprise I enjoyed it. Like reading Piranesi was kind of opening my eyes up to a new um a new genre of a new genre of art basically. Piranesi's storyline was so good it made me realize that you don't have to be looking at a screen for you to feel something which is so powerful. And I can't stress enough about how important consuming fiction is for artists and creative minds. Titles I've read include The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, Dune by Frank Herbert, The Children of Time by Adrian Travosky, Red Rising by Pierce Brown, and recently Ceci by Madeline Miller. All these are 10 out of 10 books. You can't get recommendations like this anywhere else. An honorable mention is Ready Player One because I, as much as I loved the book, the movie was pretty good as well. But if you really want to know like, what's really built up to the movie, I really recommend you reading the book as well. Hey kids, you like books, animation, arts and drawing? Well, join our Patreon page. Here you have a community of like-minded artists like you as well as other perks. What more could you possibly want? And you also be supporting the channel in the process, helping me make more videos like this. That will be the first link in the description for our Patreon page. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.